Hello everyone and welcome to our Vegan Spirituality Online Gathering. My name is Lisa Levinson and I'm the director of the Sustainable Activism Campaign for In Defense of Animals and what we do is provide emotional and spiritual tools for animal activists and our Vegan Spirituality Online Gathering is one of those spiritual tools. And what we do is we gather together and explore veganism as a spiritual practice. We've been doing this for quite a while. We have communities all across the country that meet together in person every month and explore veganism as a spiritual practice through uh, potlucks, through events, uh, speakers, and we also have this special online gathering where people can come together from all different places and we can still have this opportunity to meet together. So if you're curious about joining one of the local groups, you can go to veganspirituality.com. You can also learn about that on In Defense of Animals uh, website at idausa.org forward slash events. So it's really a treat for us to bring this program to you today. We do interview spiritual leaders in the movement, and um, I do this with my co-host, uh, Judy Carmen, she's the author of Peace to All Beings, and without any further ado, she will introduce our featured speaker for today. Hi, everybody. It's me, Judy. Can you see me? <laughs> um, I am here. I'm very excited to introduce Pastor Rob Monroe. He is a vegan pastor and has a church that is all vegan. It's called the Vegan Humanitarian Church. He also holds a certificate in nutritional studies from the uh, Dr. Colin Campbell's nutritional studies program at Cornell. Having donated all his worldly belongings to the Humanitarian Church, Pastor Rob is committed to the religion of veganism and the continual conversion of people to the lifestyle, the, the vegan lifestyle, to the benefit of all creatures and the planet on which we live. Having fed, housed, and helped countless families and individuals, Pastor Rob seeks now to provide a spiritual house of worship to vegans in Massachusetts and in New York. The Humanitarian Church has two places of worship today. One of them is on the beach at Cape Cod Bay in Massachusetts. It's uh, open to all vegans year-round and open for free camping all summer. The New York location is uh, called the Humanitarian Church and the St. Francis of Assisi Parish, and it is in er Erieville, New York. Um, it has a beautiful sanctuary with seating for 120, organ and piano with a balcony for a choir, belfry, and a function hall, and a commercial kitchen, too. The church provides Sunday vegan worship service, wedding and reception services, baptismal and furry friend blessings, and also funeral services for both furry family members and humans. Uh, the function hall is used as a conversion lecture hall for pre-vegans and a location for showing documentaries and holding discussions. The kitchen is used for instruction on preparing whole food plant-based meals. Prior to opening the churches, Pastor Rob owned and operated several businesses, one of which employed over 26,000 people in 46 states. So he's had a lot of experience organizing things. He's, he was ordained as a Christian minister in 2001 and became vegan in 2010. He converted and was anointed and appointed as a minister of veganism by the Board of Trustees of the Humanitarian Church. Early in his ministry, Pastor Rob found happiness in providing readings for the blind, feeding the hungry, and housing the needy. Pastor Rob took homeless families into his own home, housing over 18 years, six families, consisting of 12 adults and 14 children and 16 single individuals. Pastor Rob fed the hungry by rescuing a charity from financial ruin, restructuring it, and it now feeds many, many people. 
He then began feeding people directly out of his home by using two school buses. And uh, he would purchase 4,000 pounds of produce every week and distribute the food to 150 needy families for free throughout southeastern Massachusetts and northern Rhode Island. Pastor Rob seeks to provide spiritual support to all vegans and all vegan activists who in his eyes he sees as missionaries of veganism who should be recognized and supported. The Humanitarian Church website is the thehumanitarianchurch.org and it's supported by allcreatures.org which many of you may know about. It's an online ministry uh, run by uh, Reverend Frank and Mary Hoffman. So um, now that I have helped you get to know Pastor Rob a little bit, I want to ask some questions. So Pastor Rob, you've dedicated your life to helping both people and animals. Please tell us about how you became vegan and was it a natural progression from helping people to helping animals? Hi, Judy. Hi, Lisa. Thank you so much for having me on this evening. I'm honored considering all of the wonderful guests you've had. Um, the one thing I'm quite embarrassed about is the reason I became vegan was for my own selfish health. I had, had a, suffered a third stroke, was left paralyzed on the left side, blind in one eye, couldn't walk, couldn't talk. The hospital had said I had six months to live. Luckily, the woman I was seeing at the time was a physician. She spent the first day I was out of the hospital on, online. At 5 p.m., she said, no, you're not going to die. She said, I had 12 years of medical school, 15 minutes of nutrition. I found something. The next day, we emptied all my cabinets, all my, my pantry, refrigerator, and freezer. All that was left was a, was a pepper mill. Everything else went in the trash. 26 days later, I beat every professional swimmer in the Boston Sports Club Olympic size pool. So I became vegan. I quit sugar, oil, salt, processed food, and I started eating the whole food plant based diet. About two years. After that, I had a spiritual moment that was so incredible. And a guilt of ever having eaten meat, not been smart enough to know the difference. So my regret at this point is that I became vegan for a selfish reason. And I applaud anyone who became vegan for the right reason first. At that moment, it became clearly evident what I should do next. And I went on a journey trying to buy a church. The first one I spent a year negotiating the second one, I drove all the way to Mississippi. I'm sitting now in the third one. It took 14 months for the Supreme Court of New York to approve my purchase. I had no idea at the time that New York State has the most strict religious laws in the country. I'm glad that they do. And this is why you don't see many churches just sprouting up. Because the hurdles that you have to overcome are huge. But we are a recognized vegan church in the state of New York. And as it turns out, the Lord has guided me, helped me, and brought me here for a multitude of reasons. And I cannot thank him enough. And I only hope that I have the strength, fortitude, and courage to do what's right at all times. I will probably fail miserably 
at times. I know that I can be a little gruff, but I've been through hell in this life. And every day I just think of a poor creature who has done nothing wrong, who is sitting in a cage waiting to be killed. He doesn't know why he's there. I'm sorry. I swore I wasn't going to cry. Such a moving no. story, Pastor Rob. Thank you for sharing that. But it sounds like you had so much compassion for people before that, that there must have been an element of compassion when you went vegan. I love feeding people. I love feeding them for free. It's the most incredible thing to bring food into a household that has no money, doesn't know where their next meal is going to come from. And you just bring cases of food in. It's really, really nice. And to bring them healthy foods, whole foods, vegetables, produce, fruits, it's really wonderful. And so, um, it was an easy step from that to this. It really was. But now people think I'm helping them to become vegan and live a healthier life. The truth of the matter is I'm, I'm just in this for the animals now. And the byproduct is people get healthy. So, so And that's why I know I'm going to win on this round. Because everyone would think that my goal is to help people. One of them, yes specifically vegans who are out there every day spending their own time, their own money, knowing inside their conscience that they're doing the right thing. Those people, I want to support 110%. I do. As far as converting people, it's an absolutely important. I try to do it every day. Some days I win, some days I lose. But I don't stop. Not for the people now, but for the animals. Thanks. That's uh, so inspiring. And boy, you've got a lot of listeners here, including me, that uh, need that kind of support that you're offering. Uh, and that, of course, that's why we've been uh, gathering together as Vegan Spirituality members is to find that that spiritual strength. And I, I want to read something that you said. Um, quote, vegans are, are more religious about veganism than people are religious about their religion. This is proof to me that veganism is the true and only basis of a religious life, a righteous life, and the only way to live your life. Unquote. I would imagine you receive a lot of criticism for that bold statement, and I'd love to know how you handle some of those criticisms. I've had people actually stomp out of this church when I've said that. Um, in my early time in ministry, I would preach the good word of the Bible. I would talk about the Ten Commandments. I would convince people of trying to live a righteous life. And in a year's time, they would fall back into their sinning ways. But yet vegans, they're devout. They're never going to eat another animal. And the vegans I speak would say that they would rather die than to eat an animal. That, to me, speaks volumes. When, when certain folks will go to church on Sunday and then on Monday continue to sin. Where is there a religion in that person? Where is there faith in that? But a vegan will go hungry while they're on the road. They won't stop. They'll get a banana. If there's nothing else to eat, they'll drink water. They will not break their vow of veganism. And that vow they made to themselves, not in an open church. So, so again, I applaud that. That is just remarkable to me that that comes from within, and it comes across every different religion, race, 
whatever you might believe, when that is your belief and you stand by it, that to me is a religious belief. You will not break it. So that's that's my position on it. So what have some of the criticisms been besides stomping out and... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, meat eaters will come up with every excuse. They will. We all, we've all heard them all. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I think at this juncture, I do my best to try to convince them. And if somebody, like today, an interesting situation occurred. A couple of people pulled into the church parking lot. I didn't recognize them, so I walked up and asked what they were doing. And there were a couple of people that were there to paint. People loved the, the building. So they were here to paint the landscape of the property. And they asked permission. I said, of course. But I'd also gave me the opportunity to talk about veganism. Well, about 15 minutes into the conversation, the man had said to me that he doesn't believe in heaven, doesn't believe in hell, knows that misery goes on in a slaughterhouse, but he's going to continue to eat steak. Well, at that moment, I figured there was going to be no converting this person. So I walked away. I went inside, and I regretted allowing him to stay on the property because it's more like me to say, then pack up your stuff and go because this is vegan property. If you want to respect that, then don't paint the church. And I was really regretting it. And right then, the skies opened up, and a thunderstorm happened, and his painting was destroyed and he was soaked. And so it's really funny how the Lord watches out for me. And, and um, so all I can say is that if I'm coming to speak to you about veganism, you should listen <laughs> <laughs> because somebody has my back. Yeah. I hear that. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, when this, when the skies opened, I just smiled. I said, "Lord, you are amazing. Every day you do something that blows my mind." Yeah. So that means that must mean that the Lord has got our backs too. We vegans, Everyone. we <laughs> whether whether or not you believe in the Lord, whether or not you believe in Jesus Christ that you, a vegan has taken the closest step you can get to, to going through the gates of heaven. And, mm-hmm. and a vegan is more likely to get into heaven than anyone who eats meat. Because if you eat meat, that door is closed. I, uh, I can assure you from, from everything I've read and everything that I've witnessed, that the door to heaven, whether you believe or not, is open to vegans. And I pray for their souls every day. And whether or not they believe, you do not have to believe in God. You just have to live a life of veganism. That's the basis. Yeah. Now, you've mentioned also the vegan, there's a vegan Bible by Norval Husky. And yes. you shared a quote from that book with Lisa and me. And I wanted to read it to everybody. It's the vegan proclamation. And it it goes, I believe and know in my heart that our creator is a vegan God who is the only true God. I believe and know in my heart that Jesus Christ, the son of God, is vegan. I believe and know in my heart that no one can serve God without first being vegan with the unlimited love veganism promotes. So that is um, that is really a powerful quote. Is that a book that we can get hold of? Um, yes. the, is it called The Vegan Bible? That is the name of it, The Vegan Bible by Norville Husky. Um, what's interesting about that quote, I see my ministry as several um, different points. One, giving support, recognition to vegans and vegan activists. Two, conversion of of pre-vegans to the vegan lifestyle. 
in three. To use that quote in other scripture verse and meet with other clergy members, leaders of religious groups and express to them the importance of bringing their parishes to veganism. Uh, one of our ministers keeps reminding me that there's two billion Christians, yet a fraction of them are vegans. The Christian ministers have to take heed to this. And what I read about, and I have a nice 1874 Bible here, <laughs> and in it it says that there's a very special place in hell for religious leaders who take their members down the wrong path. So I think it's very important to express this. And I've done well. I've visited many churches and some listen. And the ones that do, I go and I teach the parishioners about the whole foods plant-based diet and the, the importance of veganism. The first church I did it was with was the Healing Church in Boston. And uh, it went very well. It was very well receptive. Other churches have have basically slam the door in my face when I talk about not eating meat. But I, I think that quote, if you don't have, if you're not vegan first, then you don't even understand compassion. And if you can't be compassionate, you can't be with God. And you surely can't be a religious leader. Yeah. So Norvell, I think, did an excellent job with that. Do you use that uh, vegan Bible at your church? And it's, I was wondering if you had a hymnal too, a, sim, a song book. We have a song book. Um, I, I purchased about 50 hymnal song books, so they can be shared with, with the parishioners. And I have um, 50 Bibles to go along with it. Um, the vegan Bible is probably more useful in trying to discuss certain scripture verses with non-vegans or pre-vegans. And it gives you the ammunition that you need when a Christian or religious member argues a point from certain scripture. Norvell does an excellent job at reviewing each scripture and giving you seven different perspectives on the scripture. So it's not something that you would actually use as a Bible per se um, to preach from during the service. Okay. So tell us, what's a Sunday morning like at your groundbreaking church? How does it well, go? <laughs> um, it used to go with a lot more parishioners um, until I turned completely vegan only in the sanctuary. Um, I did get a lot of people quite upset at that. But when I was preaching about veganism from the pulpit, the looks on people's faces and their attitudes towards me made me feel uncomfortable in my own church. So after a great deliberation of that, I decided that this is gonna be just for vegans. This isn't a time to try to convince you about veganism. This is a time of worship, respect, and serenity to enjoy what we believe in is veganism. And, and so the parishioner list has diminished greatly, <laughs> but it's more solemn and it's much more respectful. And so, um, but it does follow a very traditional, I grew up Catholic. I studied with the um, Severian brothers for three years after, after that. And um, so I do hold a very, very rigid, strict service. And for anyone who comes to it, you would think that you are attending a very similar to a Catholic United Methodist service or, or regular mass service where it has a homily, a liturgy, uh, a sermon. I break the bread um, and, and respect all of the process of a mass. And, uh, whether or not anyone's here, I love a mass. I just, I always have. And mm -hmm. something about the formality of it and and um, the cleanliness of it and the wholesomeness of it. Um, I'll preach to the to the church mice if I have to. <laughs> and so um, 
but you know, I'm 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 in a very meat centric environment here, where people hunt, they eat meat, they farm animals. I have convinced one local um, rancher to stop farming animals. This year, he's he's turned his th 63 acres into um, strictly vegetables. He's no longer selling cattle, and uh, it was it was a long cold winter doing that. Many a night was spent in the barn praying and talking to him. And the night that I won him over uh, was quite funny. We've been freezing. It was just, it's brutal weather up here. So I was leaving the barn. It was pitch dark. Another farmer had used his tractor that day and parked it um, in the way of the walkway. So I was walking around the tractor and uh, I had my hands in my uh, Parker pockets and my feet got caught in bailing wire. And I took a header. I almost, I almost whacked my head on the on the tractor, and I ended up in a in a ten foot long, three foot wide, two foot deep, soaking wet puddle of cow dung, from head to toe, just covered. Well, I went back in laughing, and everybody was there. They saw me, and I mean, I was covered. I couldn't even get my hands out of my pockets in time to stop the fall. So my, I went face first into cow dung about two foot deep. And so we laughed so hard and had such a nice time that I'm, I'm pretty sure that was the night that he figured I was okay. And uh, <laughs> since then he has converted to full vegan. He did have a heart attack, which really helped the situation. I will say it wasn't, it wasn't just me praying. Um, the heart attack really helped him, especially when his doctor said, you got to cut out the red meat. So, so um, I will say the heart attack was a blessing, um, but he's now going to farm 63 acres of vegetables. And I think in five years time, he will look back and have made a small fortune, much more than he would have ever made. And I did ask him for, I would help him and do everything I could. And I asked for one thing in return, that he would sign a letter in a year from now, that it was the best thing that he ever did. So I can take that letter to all the other cattle ranches around and show them what he did and what they can do. So we're getting there. A little, some baby steps here, but I'm getting there. Wonderful, that's such a great story. So, and it sounds like you have a great space for pre-vegans to come yeah. uh, to watch films, get motivated to go vegan. Uh, many of our listeners host vegan spirituality gatherings for their own local groups. What are some activities you do at the church that these gatherings might do as well to help get pre-vegans going? Well, and I have I've signed up and been approved for the free showings of Forks Over Knives, Cowspiracy, and the movie Fed Up. And so um, I did join the local meetup group. And I've opened up the space for people to use through meetups. And um, really, I've started with the small community organization. Um, I have converted a few people here. And they got it. Like after the first showing of a movie, they understood. And it's very rewarding to see that enlightenment happen firsthand. And so the function hall holds about 100 people. Um, I've only had maybe, well, the last group, I. I thought I'd have more. I cooked dinner for 30 people. It was during a blizzard, of course, which we had here like every other day. So some people get stuck on Route 90, others called, some people were older. So of the 30 that were invited, only I think 12 made it. I mean, it was just brutal weather. And so um, everybody got to take home food <laughs> and um, they had a nice time and, and those 12 got it. They're on a, I shouldn't say that, two of the 12 um, just, you know, weren't gonna buy into it. And no matter what, they were older, um, they were committed to eating animals and um, they left quietly when everybody else did stick around afterwards. Uh, that's okay. I, I can't win them all. And I used to, I, I think, of it come to accept that. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to ask um, 
on our vegan spirituality calls, we often talk about how our own spiritual practices can help us cope with the grief and the burnout and the compassion fatigue that can affect us as animal activists. What advice do you have for us to maintain our inner peace and our effectiveness while continually facing the, the awful things that are happening to animals? I only wish I knew. I cry constantly over it. I feel terrible about it. I think one of the things that I do, I read a lot of Jonathan Edwards' works. And there's one of his um, sermons that, that I actually kind of became somewhat famous for reading. Um, I used to read it to the blind. My board of trustees used to joke that uh, the only reason why I had people listen is they were blind and couldn't find their way out. <laughs> Most people that hear Jonathan Edwards' sermons shut them off because they're, they're full of hell and damnation but it gives me great solace to read his works and know that those who refuse to convert to veganism and close the door to it without any caring or compassion, that there's a place in hell for them. And Jonathan Edwards is the guy who talks about that. He's from 1741. He was really responsible for the great awakening in our country that opened a million three hundred thousand souls to the Lord. And his sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, has gotten me through so many miserable days that I would recommend anyone who is a little upset about the world to read that. And I, th I know it's, um, it's actually on my website, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And um, I think if you were to read that, it will give you solace that God is there. He's watching everyone. And he's, he's got a reward in heaven for those who are following not killing animals. Yeah, there is that. Okay, thanks. Now, um, we're going to... We're going to uh, imagine we have a lot of questions, but is there anything you'd like to add before we open up for questions? Well, I only hope, like I prayed this evening before this, I prayed to the Lord for guidance, wisdom, kindness, caring, and compassion. I know I won't make everyone happy. I, I, I probably will be ostracized from vegans because of my hard stance on veganism. I think you have to, when you're a vegan, you have to bring it through to every aspect of your life. And not just be vegan by what you're on your plate, but be vegan in every step that you take in the planet. And I just hope that I earn the respect of vegans that I do the right thing religiously by all persons at all times, and that I do everything correctly in the eyes of the Lord. I, I, I'm, I know I'll fail in some regards. Please forgive me. And uh, I just hope to lead this church in a proper fashion and in a way that it does good. Thank you so much, Pastor Rob. Lisa, do you want to open up for questions now? Yes, let's go ahead and do that. Um, thank you so much for that wonderful interview, Judy, and also Pastor Rob for sharing your story. It's so moving. And so how this works is if you have a question or a comment, you can type it in the chat box if you're with us on the webinar, or you can press star four on your phone, and that will um, bring your, uh, your phone will actually tune into the webinar and you can, you can ask us questions. Looks like somebody's doing that now. So if you, if you do have a question, you can feel free to, 
to ask it. If you're with us on Facebook Live, then what I would suggest is to type into the chat box on the comment section any questions that you have, and I will be sure to let Pastor Rob know. So hopefully we can hear from everyone who has questions. And so far, just to let you know, I don't see anything so far in the chat box. Looks like someone's trying to ask a question. Yes. Yes. Please do. What's your question? I was just saying, like, you know, when he was, I can't remember what he was saying, but I do know that every year on the day of the Kentucky Derby, I used to go place a bet. I used to play a bet with a friend of mine. You know, about a dollar on which horse would win, and this year we played the lottery, and he won. Not only did he win five dollars, but he won a free ticket, which he won the five dollars off of. <laughs> so I think maybe God was trying to tell us something too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. And that was Chris coming to us from Pennsylvania. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Yes. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, and just um I don't see any questions in the chat box here, so just wanted to see if anybody on our Facebook had any questions for Pastor Rob. And I also was wondering, if you don't mind, Pastor Rob, if you can share a little bit about what's gonna happen at your church this Sunday. Uh, yes, this Sunday oh. at 10 a.m., I will be uh, broadcasting a live vegan worship service. So it should go from about 10 a.m. to 10.45. Uh, it'll be available on YouTube Live. If I get it working correctly, it'll be on Facebook Live. Um, I am having some difficulty trying to figure out that aspect of it, but I think by Sunday I should have it. And... Um, I invite everyone who wants to be part of a vegan worship to to watch online. I have a question. Yes, please say, say your name so we know who who's chatting with us. Hi, I'm Judy from Michigan. Hi, Judy. And I'm a, I, I was a vegetarian for a year before I became vegan, and I am I've been vegan now for like six or seven months. So it's still a new lifestyle, but I believe the most compassionate lifestyle. I am a Christian, and it appalls me that there are the majority of Christians uh, are meat eaters, gluttonous meat eaters. Okay, so being being an, uh, being someone who promotes veganism and talks about it all the time, I've actually ostracized myself and have lost friends and family members over it. Um, I'm very well isolated because of my, my, uh, my choice to live a compassionate lifestyle and actually live my values and, and not just talk about them on Sunday morning. So I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you to the pastor for everything you do, but also how, how do you deal with that? displaying that Christian lifestyle, setting the example to others about Christ and promoting veganism and 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 not turning people off and, and shutting them out. Well, if I might address that, because I deal with that daily. In the scriptures, it says that there will be prophets from time to time that will be speaking the truth who people will ignore, in fact, that they will ostracize them. So please take solace in the fact that every time you're ostracized, you're doing the work of God. Please, you will find eventually vegans who will support you, who will become your friends. I find at this juncture, I'm happier to be alone than to be with a meat eater. There's certain parts of scripture where it even says, do not sit at the table with a meat eater. And so I know it's hard right now. I know. But please be assured that your work, and, and if they aren't going to convert, 
You would rather be alone than to be with a meat eater. But your work is being recognized. It is, and it is so valuable. So eventually, you'll create a network of people that are close to you. It'll take some time. But when you have that network, you will, you will be very happy. So I know it's difficult now. And I'll say a special prayer for you in the morning. And please be, be part of the Sunday worship service, and hopefully you'll find some solitude in that. Well, thank you for asking that question, and I really appreciate your honesty and sharing your concerns. And it is so important to connect with other vegans. There may be even vegan Facebook groups, vegan meetup groups that you can join. Um, and in those groups, you may find other uh, spiritual vegans who are who are Christian or other religions who who might want to um, to talk about what is it like to be uh, to a person of faith in the vegan community. And oh, and of course, joining uh, the upcoming live version of of his of Pastor Rob's worship service will be really just such a wonderful blessing to everyone. We did have a question and this question comes from Suzanne and she asks um, that you she was noticing that she's on online with us and she was noticing that you wear a Roman collar and can you talk a little bit about that? She's curious. Well I grew up in the Catholic faith faith. I studied for three years with the Zaverian brothers. Um, I was ordained through the Star Church program and, of course, anointed and ordained by the trustees of this church, where we subscribe to uh, formal wear. And so um, even though you think it's a Roman Catholic, Christian ministers wear them, pastors wear it, and um, I'm most comfortable with it. And chances are I probably would have stayed within the Catholic faith um, and, and possibly even been a Catholic priest. But my divergence came over the meat issue. And my divergence came over other aspects of the Catholic Church versus a free-thinking society today. So, so um, we feel it's best to, to be recognized religiously that way. Hmm. Thank you for addressing that question. <laughs> That's really interesting. I didn't know that. So. And we have a couple of other questions. Question. One, one can you is, guys, oh, yes, Can please. you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. What's your name? My name is Jeannie, and I just, I, I, if, I, if this is not the right form, please let me know. I will. But I'm searching. My current, I, I am, I'm heavily into LGBT rights. Mm -hmm. um, my current church and my pastor, um, my pastor is a wonderful woman named Carla. Um, I see a huge disconnect there because um, they are so welcoming to, you know, rights of the, they're so welcoming and accepting of human rights. Um, but I just, and it's, it's like a disconnect and the back and forth that, you know, that churches that I know of where they do practice the human, uh, the, excuse me, the humanity to animals and free animals as all beings, you know, they don't feel the same way about um, those of us who are born LGBT. Can you, I mean, is this the right, uh, do I need to hang up now? Can you address that question? Or, oh, that's fine. No, no, about, no need to hang LGBT. up at all. This is okay. our, our form so I'm welcomes looking for a place. everyone. I'm looking so. for a church to call home. Oh. Um, and it's, just, it's hard with the disconnects. Yes. Um, you know, I, follow, mm -hmm. I believe myself a follower of Jesus. That's where it ends. Love and love, love, love and faith. Um, that's kind of where it ends. And I don't go deep into religion. I believe all religions. At the end of the day, that's that's where they're headed. The path they're going to using to get there is sometimes distorted. So I'll let you answer. Okay. Um, the basis of our church is not eating meat. Okay. And and. I love all vegans. Your personal choices happen to be your personal choices. Fantastic. Okay. And and I think that when you make personal choices, you're empowering yourself. And you're breaking the molds of what society wants you to be. And I think that's important. That's a free 
thinking society. And when you're spiritually connected as a vegan, I don't think you'll have any issues about who you are, what you are, and where you stand in society. Just be vegan. After that, there's sections in the Bible that say, when you're doing it right, everything becomes yay and amen. And the vegans I know, we support veganism. Right. Okay. And, and when you become vegan, you have compassion. When you're vegan, you become caring. When you're vegan, you become accepting. So find a church thank that you for answering. would be that way. Yeah, thank you for answering. I was very scared to ask. Um, that that's kind of, there's so many disconnects, and I just wanted to get your view on it. So I thank you. Of course. Thank you for your courage to ask that question. Uh -huh. Just know that you're very welcome on all of our gatherings, and we just encourage uh, this type of dialogue. And I want to also bring up a couple of questions that came in through the chat box. And this is, in a way, sort of a similar with um, so someone who, this is actually about being vegan and non-religious. So there, there is a difference, but just about looking in general at people um, being accepting. So your insights are moving and inspiring. This is somebody speaking to you. Um, uh, Jacob, I think his name is, and uh, he says through the years he's parted ways with most people who are not vegan, and he only has vegan friends. But what about the family members? He he would do great damage, especially to his mother, um, if he wasn't at the table for Christmas with her. His family feels attacked when he tries to um, adjust and that they could have uh, vegan meals together and also it's is the question is is it moral to to is it moral to do such a big harm to your a mother for example who who treats the uh, common table and sitting together for christmas as one of the most most important things that you can possibly have in a family so that question uh, is uh, Jacob coming from Munich, Germany? Wow. Um, my feeling is that when there's a certain um, element of an individual that is adamant about something, then family members need to respect that. And they should probably say, sure, you know something, for you to be at our table for that one day a year, we won't have meat at the table. You can offer to come over and cook all the food. You can come over and tell them all the movies, all the reasons. Or you could just simply say, look, for me, I love you. I want to be with you. But for me, just this one day, would you kindly not serve meat? 365 days a year, just one day. If they can't respect you in that regard, then is there any real real love there? So approach it on a professional, nice, loving way. Please, for me, I beg of you. I want to be part of this family function, but I cannot if there's going to be meat on the table. I know that's a hard line to draw, but I've drawn it with my own family members. And it's something you can do. It isn't nice. It's sometimes hard. But I've now heard that my family members that I've drawn that hive line with have converted almost 90% to veganism. While I sat at their tables, though, did they convert? No. Sounds like, uh, Cami, do you have a question for us? Uh, no. Okay, <laughs> sorry, we're just hearing a little from you. That's okay, no worries. We do have a question from uh, someone named Jack. And he is asking, he says that not everyone, not all vegans connect um, with any religious denomination. And so he's asking, how do you approach non-Christians or folks who, who might be Jewish or atheist? Um, how, how would you approach them? Well, again, everyone is welcome if they're a vegan. I do not push my beliefs of my belief of Jesus Christ, the Holy Father and the, and the Holy Spirit. I don't push that on anyone. Those are my beliefs. 
I respect your beliefs, whether you're Buddhist, atheist, as long as you're a vegan, I'm happy with you. Um, and I do know that half of all vegans do not believe in religion. I think many of them were shunned because they don't believe in an organized religion. My feeling is you don't have to come to church every Sunday. Stop eating animals. Read about the Ten Commandments. I would have to say, not lying, not cheating, not coveting somebody else's things, not stealing, are pretty good rules to live by. If you do that and you don't eat animals, then you don't have to be part of an organized religion. You don't. I'd rather hear about you going off enjoying your Sundays with people you love. But organized religion that doesn't teach you that is actually after your wallet, which I'm not. And so um, my feeling is if you feel as though you need a religious support group, we're here. If you just want to be vegan with us, we're here. Want to stop in for a vegan meal, an hour of private time mm -hmm. in a beautiful sanctuary? Great, come in and mediate. But no one knows for sure what's on the other side of this life. I have my feelings and beliefs, you have yours, atheist or not. If you have compassion towards mm -hmm. animals, you may think you're atheist, but I've heard of some atheists finding God in everything after they've become vegan. So um, give it time and we'll see what happens with you. Hmm. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Rob. People are, are expressing their gratitude in the chat box. Thank you for answering their questions. And there is someone here who, on our Facebook Live, who says that they opened their church to all faith traditions and non-believers. And um, then uh, asked if you're open to all, which I think you just answered that question. So then there was another another question here, that there's a church down the street. This is a church in Louisiana, um, and it happens to be called the Francis of Assisi Church. And the, the person who's asking, Timothy, felt it was a blessing that God led, led him to the church. And uh, he swore that he wouldn't attend a Catholic church, <laughs> probably because of previous experiences. Now, how should he approach this church? Uh, well, one of our board of trustees um, is doing the exact same thing with his church in Virginia. And he's created a website. He's gone every um, Wednesday morning to the Men's Bible Club, brought them breakfast. He gets up at four in the morning to make it a vegan breakfast. Spent a year doing that. Has um, created an online um, similar page to the church to introduce veganism. As a, as a spiritual opening. Um, I would have to say, given the name of the church, it should be easy. St. Francis of Assisi, the saint for animals, um, I would think would be the perfect place to start and just say, look, we have to talk about St. Francis and his feeling towards animals. St. Francis was a devout vegan. Um, knowing that, then... I think that's a that's an opening to bring that up to your church leaders. Wonderful. Well, thank you for answering those questions. Um, this has been such a delight to have you here. And, and I wanted to also mention to everyone that if you are in a church or there's a church nearby or any religious group, actually, we do have in Defense of Animals, we have an interfaith vegan coalition and we put together some vegan advocacy kits to help you veganize your place of worship. So you can access those kits on the, the website, which is the interfaithvegancoalition.org. And we have some of those kits are already up and prepared, and we're still working on getting a few more up there. So there will be one for almost every uh, religious affiliation, and you can use them as a guide to then have these discussions with the faith-based leaders to encourage them to adopt more vegan or vegan-friendly practices and, and policies. Oh, thank you so much, Pastor Rob, and thanks to everyone for asking questions. This has been really wonderful to have the conversation. 
And uh, we are getting close to the, the end of our, our interview with Pastor Rob. And so I wanted to, um, I know that he's going to share a special closing prayer with us and wanted to let everyone know that, that we, some of the things that we do together, we also have retreats, spiritual retreats. And we have one coming up that is about cultivating um, mindfulness and self-care. And that will be happening in the San Francisco Bay Area. If you're interested, you can go to idausa.org forward slash retreats. And for those who may want to take a, a, a vacation or a trip to Hawaii, uh, in December, we're going to be having a vegan spirituality retreat on the Big Island, which is going through some serious uh, cleansing at the moment with different lava flows and also on Maui. So stay tuned. We You can check the details out at idausa.org forward slash Hawaii retreat. So we'll remind you about that going forward. But for now, thanks to, to Judy for doing our interview. And we're getting some comments saying thank you for this amazing webinar. And it was exactly what I needed to hear. So this is so excellent to be together and be able to, um, to have these discussions. That's why we wanted to to start this, this um, all of these forums, whether online or in person, to have these discussions, to acknowledge and validate that there are spiritual vegans who, who want to practice um, in many different ways. So Pastor Rob, are you ready to share the, the closing prayer? Yes, it's a prayer that most people have heard. It's the Lord's Prayer, if I may. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Dear Heavenly Father, Please watch over every vegan, every vegan activist. Have them travel safe. Have the angels of heaven watch over them. They are our missionaries. They're doing your work. Please, dear Lord, give them the resources they need. Answer their prayers, answer their wishes, and just protect them every day. For this I pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wow, Thank you. That was so beautiful. Thank you so much, Pastor Rob. Thank you, guys. Brought Thank you, Brian. Tears to my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for all the support that you give to animal activists, Pastor Rob, and that you're going to give at church. So if you're driving down, I think it's I-90, then you can you can turn off and visit the Humanitarian Church, and Pastor Rob will welcome you there. Absolutely. Yeah. So thanks Thank to everyone all. for tuning in. We hope you can join us. We offer this program every month. That's the second Thursday of the month. Um, but stay tuned on the In Defense of Animals Facebook page and also via our email. We announce all of these events. And we hope to see you next time. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you Take all. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Pastor Rob. Thank you, Judy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. Good night. Yeah, everyone. Good night. Good night.